I say, how are you doing today? How are you doing today? I am your favorite rapper's favorite rapper, the best fair writer and director, St. Louis Facts, award-winning published author, actor, journalist, actor, business owner, Lacey G. Soldier Turner. And today I have a special guest with me, man. You know, his accolades is more greater than mine. You know what I'm saying? We got the Grammy award-winning producer, you know, MC actor, poet, songwriter, director. Man, y'all yeah, seen him in the film ATL alongside T.I. and Lauren London. Man, Jason Weaver, man, he wrote for plenty of artists and worked on their projects. Uh, people like Kanye West, The Game, Macy Gray. Man, we got the wonderful, amazing, talented. I'll be back, man. Welcome to the platform. Oh, man, thank you for having me. I mean, it's been great, man. You know, I've been I've been watching you, man. I've been following your career and everything. So uh, my first question to you is, where were you born and raised? And where did the name I'll Be Back come from? Oh, man, I was born and raised uh, in the South Bronx. And, um, you know, that's my that's my uh, the birthplace of hip hop as well. But it's it's the stomping grounds of everything that is me, you know, Um that that city at that time in the 80s, uh, you know, kind of, you know, revolutionized what we have today, you know. Um, and uh, I'll Be Back came from one of the kings of that city, um, Christopher Lee Rios. You know, we know him as Big Pine. Big Pine. Yeah, he was, um, I was on the phone with him and I hadn't seen him in a while. And I was like, yo, man, wait, wait. Man, where you been, man? Come on, you know, <laughs> you know, you're like, yo, come on, where you at? He's like, don't worry, you know. He's like, he's like, I, I got five more songs to make, and I'm gonna be done with uh, endangered species because I, I believe he was calling it that before it it turned to yeah, baby, mm -hmm. and um, he was like, don't worry, I'll be back. <laughs> He goes, that's dope. That's your name from now on. <laughs> so you ain't have a choice. He was like, your name is Alvin. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then he passed away the next day. Wow, that's crazy. So that's a, man, I've been I've been I'll be back since February six, two thousand. Wow, that's amazing that he gave you that name before he passed too. So, uh, being that you know, Big Pun was your cousin. Is he the, the one that influenced you? Yeah, he's a family friend. You know, okay. we kind of, you know, I, I had to, I wanted to clear that up. I was trying to, my life's been moving fast. And mm -hmm. the way, and the way, and the way my life has moved, I think um, when people, you, when people intermingle with, when worlds collide, mm -hmm. right? I wasn't just in the rap game. So when I'm in other parts of the world, you know, I take him with me, you know, and he called me his little cousin, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So yeah. that's you know what I mean. So I'm not gonna. Yeah, I got you. I got you. <laughs> I've, been, I've, been, I've been operating like he's still here. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. um, <laughs> that's my know. mama's sister, son. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And 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 even, but the most important thing is getting it right. And so mm -hmm. like, yes. I, I just I just want people to know that um I lived in his attic, mm -hmm. you know, for like for a while, and he I would go everywhere with him, and I was just a young kid, you know, at the time when he blew up. So what you know of Big Pun and what Christopher Lee Rios is, is, you know, there's two different entities. I don't think the world got a chance to um, learn of his genius and how special he was. And I've been raising my daughter for the past 10 years, but I'm ready to tell the world and ready to um, reflect on this man's art and this man's genius. And because um, I'm better at my sword and telling people you know man i love big pun before because my favorite rapper my favorite lyricist is, who taught me everything i know is eminem but before him it was big pun i was like so like blown away by his lyricism the way yeah. he played play with words and sound rhyme and bend the words he was just a phenomenal artist man taken away too soon for real yeah yeah can you hear me clear yep i can hear you clear cool Okay, so um, man, that you said he was the family friend. Did he influence you to rap, or how did you get into rapping? Yeah, what? <laughs> I was I was watching him write. Like he, <laughs> he be he be sleeping. He'll wake up and he 
you know, go in on his loose leaf and um, always writing. And, you know, there'd be times where um, I was, uh, yeah, like some of the classic records that you that you've heard, you know, what I'm saying I watched him pen it, you know, what I'm saying. And that's um, in the middle of the little Italy. <laughs> not, not that one. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Not that session. Um, no, but like, you know, you know, um, a lot of the freestyles too, because in ninety nine, he was done with capital punishment, but he was like really, he was the king of the features. He was rapping on everybody's stuff, like you know, Bam from TV or like Fantastic Four or just just Mister Servon and you know just Heavy D. There's just all these like we want a verse from Pun J Lo, uh, Ricky Martin. Um, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like the the list was going on and on of who wanted a verse from Pun, and you know I I was watching him deal with people too, you know, and deal with other artists, you know. Um, so yeah, you know his his approach to his records, or what would be his album, versus what he would give in a feature, is an art form that I don't even think artists understand. Be um, what type of artist would you clarify yourself as? I'm a poet, you know. Um, when it comes down to it, uh, I've always been a writer, and poetry has always fueled the 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 car engine. Um, I love writing for like screen plays, and I love writing um dialogues, you know, and making a scene come to life, but you know, um, yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a spoken word New Yorkian poet. You know what I'm saying? Uh, like I'm, I'm one of those uh, elite uh, stage performers that was in the in New York City at that time, going at it in slam poetry. You know, um, a lot of this culture is birthed from that because the commercials, even the commercials at a time was taking a lot of the poets uh -huh. that, you know. Um, Maya Del Valle, Lemon, uh, Suhail Ahmad, uh, Black Ice, um, Julian. Um, there, there's so many, um, you know, poets that was doing, that were crafting plays in their poems. That's why H. Um, Russell Simmons' deaf, um, deaf poetry on Broadway was so influential to even what Alexander Hamilton is today, you know, um, it opened the doors for, you know, ethnicity in in the Broadway space. Um, outside of John Johnny Le Leguizamo, you know, um, who is an actor and a comedian who, and, 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 a, and a prolific writer and a prolific Latin writer, his poetry in his storytelling with his mother and his father is as intricate as Biggie Smalls would be when he's like one black, one Malaysian, we in the hallway waiting patient. As soon as he hits the door, <laughs> Rob's blasting. I saw her brains hit the floor. Yeah, yeah, Rob's laughing. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like it's like it's like it's like the imagery of what's what happens next. What happens next? I think that that will describe who I'll be back is because he already told you his name. So let me ask you this: You know, man, that you done, done music. Do you care more about the lyrics or the beat? It should be a whole conversation. Hmm. You know, Walk It Out was a whole conversation. Right. The, the beat and the lyrics was, hmm. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, real talk. So, and if you want to say that, oh, this lyricist just took a shot at Walk It Out, I didn't. I told you about the complexities of mm -hmm. even the hook of now walk it out, but then walk it out. Yeah. Now, now you add one of the greatest lyricists of all time, and you let and you go go in. <laughs> and, and now, what, what do you have? You yeah. have three stacks making something that you would say is um, just focus on the beat primarily. Yeah. And turned it into what hip hop is. You know, right. we we were always the rusty fork trying to eat like the silver spoon. Mm -hmm. And um, but you know, uh, you can't you can't have dinner without us. Well, the lyrics, the lyrics is just so powerful. He said a lot, 
in a little bit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Praise God. Yes. So I know you received your first Grammy Award uh, for the work on Kanye West, you know, his multi-platinum album, Graduation. Um, writing and producing the song, Good Night, Future and Most Deaf. So um, how did that happen? And what was that feeling like when you won that Grammy? Well, it's his grant is Ye's Grammy, you know. Um, but to be a part of that, mm-hmm. cause I, cause if you told if you told me I was working craft services on the <laughs> <laughs> on the movie of Gang, <laughs> Gangs of New York, you know what I'm saying? And he's yeah. like, yo, there's Leonardo DiCaprio, and I'm serving burgers. I'm like, yo, I'm a part of that Oscar. You feel what I'm saying? Facts. It don't even matter. Facts. Facts. Just being just in the whole presentation of the art piece, um, you know, the album didn't start with Good Morning until he had he had Good Night before he had Good Morning, you know. And so, and good morning is good morning. You know what I'm saying? Good morning. Yes, yes. Um, the poetry in that is that our art is not just for that time. Uh-huh. Our art is for later. Yes. So I had a song called Lullaby that I believe that I would one day sing to my child about hip hop and what hip hop was um and i got both deaf on it you know um and i uh while i was r- moving his vocals over i added those keys these keys bling 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 and um it was just me and most and it was to my child right mm-hmm. i don't have a child yet at that point Ye hears it and is like, yo. He's like, yo, but we can make it so much broader than just hip hop. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Which Ye brings it to an emotion of never saying goodbye, you know, and to, um, and his verse on there is so cold. It's just, it's really elite Ye, um, to, you know, uh, to my, to my, to my cloth of Ye that I love of the mid, of the Midwestern. Yes. Um, and uh, then he does Good Morning and fills in the album and the album starts to fill in so I provided that little spark in, yeah. in the essence of the piece of the of one of the thrills yeah. of hip hop <laughs> so years later my daughter is in his school uh-huh. and she's in Paris with him and she has on the the uniform, and she's screaming, "Good morning, Donna! Yeah. <laughs> Good morning, Donna!" Right. To the kids, all wearing that black woman's shirt, that black woman's face on their shirt, on the back of their shirt, shirt. right? Mm-hmm. But at the time in graduation, I had met Doctor Donda West, and she and he was. She told she talked to me about she she told me something that changed my life um right there as a young man. Um and uh you know sometimes I tell people sometimes I just keep it for me, you know what I mean? But it's like it's not for me. It's it it was it was really she looked at Ye and was like, That man has taught me so much. I'm so grateful for that man. Right. And at that time, I've never heard a mom call a, a just whatever my bubble yeah. that I was in. I never heard a mom call uh, a son that man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or like, you know, or he's taught me. And with that, I was able to help a lot of the people that were um, um, legends above me that are or older brothers or older uh, contemporaries. And I would able I was able to learn from them because I was able to assist them and teach them. You know what I'm saying? Something. Yeah. And so so my lifespan has, I believe, grown because of that advice from Dr. Don DeWest. And the idea that years later 
hears my daughter um, singing to her and si and her classmates singing to her and North singing to her. Um, that's a lot of poetry in there. Yeah. And it's so profound too. Uh, just hearing you say the words artist for later, that is very powerful. You know what I'm saying? Like, and then hearing that story that's very deep. Yeah. But um, I know you're working, uh, I don't know if it's finished. I think it is finished yet. Yeah, your gospel rap masterpiece, Apple Z. Yeah, Apple Z is finished. Yeah. It's out. Yeah. Um, it's on SoundCloud. We have a reloaded, we have Apple Z reloaded that Dom is making us do. Mm -hmm. Um she's the executive over at Just B and she's like, we should do this. And then we was all like, yeah, that, that, the, way she, the, way she, the way she does it, with, I don't know, she's one of those executives and it's like, um, uh, we trust her. And so we're going to come up with Apple Z um, Reloaded, which uh -huh. Apple Z is redo, uh -huh. you know, refresh it on the computer. It's one of the last yeah. things, shortcuts that, um, that Steve Jobs gave us, you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. But, but it's also the, the start and finish uh -huh. of you know um Stanley Kubrick's idea of you know the beginning of man and the end of man you know in space odyssey 2001 and i and this generation z is 1997 to 2012 and i believe that generation you know um needed and craved information so much that we created this world you know, uh -huh. um, this wireless mouse pad because uh -huh. I because I needed the mouse over here. You know exactly. what I'm saying? Exactly. And so our misguidedness of what we thought we needed um, kind of put a hurting on our babies. Uh -huh. And so my daughter was born 2012. So she's the start of the next thing, right? And right. so Apple. Adam uh or Apple uh is um the idea that we are seed form mm -hmm. when we were listening to God, you know, and everything in between doesn't really matter. All we have to do is hit Apple Z and get yeah. back with God. Yeah. And, and we'll be fine. No one he ain't judging you uh the way you think he is. Um and so like just hit the button. Praise God. Man, I see. I love you, man. You're so deep. <laughs> yeah, this is deep. been in the game for years. <laughs> hey, people just be picking titles. Hey, we're gonna call this tree for life. You know, they don't be having no breakdown. Of it. Yeah, man, well, just, just yeah, Apple Z, man. And 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 the last record is called Moon. Mm. And so what we did was instead of um Instead of having just videos for each record, we had we had a, we have a a, a YouTube uh -huh. uh, show called the Not So Live Stream, where I do a one take like a comedy special, uh -huh. but but for a poet, and um, you see two one takes on top of each other, uh -huh. so it's just a live theatrical kind of one man show, but. Um, we chose, we shot it, um, <laughs> we shot it on these acres of land that in the, on the day where it was an eclipse. Wow. So there, there was no, <laughs> there was no moon that day. And, um, it was the day of the moon. I believe it was the 19th. Um, and, uh, the 18th, 18th. Yeah. It was the 18th, the day of the moon. And, the number of the moon and there was no moon. So since we shot day and night, when we blended the two one takes together, it was day and night. Right. That's like, crazy. Like it would be on the moon. Yeah, that's crazy. You know, and and so we said in our description, we was like, wow, we saw the the departure of the moon um uh uh with Neil Armstrong. And uh we when when the Spaceship departed. Um, the camera, the camera zoomed up and watched the spaceship go. So I always asked, 
who panned the camera? <laughs> <laughs> and so here's this album of this guy on the moon still praising God because they left him up there. And he's just telling y'all to hit the button. Go at it. Hit that button. Deep this man. I'll be back when you deep. I love it. <laughs> Praise God, man. You know, yes, man. yeah, we we just trying to like continue to we have a responsibility. And Definitely. just quickly, I like the bars on the on the album too. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Rap it's there's some rapidity rap moments. Mm-hmm. There's some culture moments or just, you know, um the way I fall in pocket with the uh Monifa record, uh uh you know, she in her genius her voice, the way it blended, um, uh, and the her, her, the way her voice blended with mine felt so good, you know, um, to use my voice as an instrument. And so that's why when you ask, what do I like, the lyrics or the beat, it should mm-hmm. all be one mm-hmm. conversation. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, so, mm-hmm. Who is your top five lyricists? Lyricists? Yes. Lil Wayne. Um, is probably the top of the list. Um, yay, will say things. I don't think y'all understand like how bar he is, but y'all people gonna think that I'm being biased. But <laughs> you know what I'm saying like, um, but I would say, I would say Wayne. I would say Nas. I would say Pun. Sheesh. You know, I I would say Corey Guns. I like Corey. Yeah. Axel. I would say, you know what I'm saying? I, I don't think y'all really listen to French Montana like I listen to Frenchie. <laughs> I'm going to have to go listen to French. French, now you said he in there, so I'm going to have to go listen to like him. The, but like old French. Like he, because he, he understands the game. He's playing, he's in the league. Yeah, playing he on plays, the, Yeah, He plays the game. But like, you know, or Max B., you know he's coming home. Yeah. In April. Um, lyrically, the way the way um, Lupe will always be a fiasco. Yeah, um, voice the five nine. Yeah, um, it's one of my favorites. The game, the game too. I'm a. Mm-hmm. I've, I've been a huge game fan since I was a young lad. I always felt like I was. I always felt like I knew him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And yeah. then I got a chance to um, know him. I was, it's like, wow, it's one of those uh, hip hop stories, you know, storytelling moments where you go, wow, I saw, I, I, I saw that we would connect, you know what I'm saying? Like, he's a genius writer, you know what I'm saying? Um, learned a lot from him. Um, hmm. I know you said five, but. <laughs> he's like, like. Hey, you named some of the greatest. You know my, you know some of my five. You, I, you know, I don't know if people, you know, like I'm, I'm a K Dot fan. Like, yeah. you know, I, you know, what I'm saying. Um, Did you I, like DMX? I, I'm a DMX fan. Yeah. Like the poetry. Yes. Yeah. And, and the, also, here's the thing, right? Okay, let's define lyrical. Mm-hmm. If you're gonna say lyrical, it's like Wayne and Black Thought. Yeah, yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely. Just like those two, I'm always gonna go. What is he gonna say? Yeah. What is he gonna say? <laughs> That's how I am with M. <laughs> but see, I'm not like that with M, and I don't want to get into this argument. But <laughs> I'm a, you know, I'm a. Are you a? a uh. Are you afraid of an egg raised when you raise an egg, blood dripping from it, ripping your stomach up from the waist up? You know, you talk a lot, of, but you was never ill, though. I'm strong enough to beat you to death with a feather pillow. Tipped over some cows just for a joke and a laugh. Jumped up, choked the giraffe, snapped his neck, and broke it in half. Like, that Eminem, you know, the way he traveled, you know, mm-hmm. what he did, he expressed, explained, elaborated. Mm-hmm. You know, it was like, ch- you know, tripped up, choked the giraffe, Snapped his neck and broke it in half. Waging right, wars, run on stage and sprayed cage and age and orange. Yeah. Washed, wiped my with his page. You, you hear them bars. <laughs> you know but he, he kept going. He going. I'm steaming this year. I ripped the mystical's voice box out and screaming here. 
This is not a gimmick trick. This is an image. I live it. Give a damn. I don't know what a damn is to give it. When 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 he keeps traveling in that space, I I think there's like where New M is. He goes to a space where he either says, "You remember this, right? You remember what I said before." Yeah, and he he's having the same conversation with us. I got you, and I think like. I never heard someone jump up and choke a giraffe. You know? <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't heard giraffe. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, so, it's, like a, it's like how Miles have hit something. We just hadn't heard that hit yet. We, it, it's not that that hit did never existed because it's obviously there. Mm -hmm. But the way it, it pulled out, we didn't hear that. So we hadn't heard giraffe be used in the context of, of exactly, uh, see what I'm saying. So if he goes, yeah. if he goes, you remember what I did to that giraffe? It's like, uh, <laughs> yeah. I just I'm I'm all, J Cole. Oh uh, yeah, right, whoa, J Cole, Ham and Kendrick. I'm always like, what? What are you say? <laughs> what, what can you do? And that's oh, yeah. the most enticing thing. That's the most enticing thing. Yeah, the most enticing thing. Man, all right. There could be a there could be a, a a prolific trade right now, mm -hmm. where somehow the Lakers get Damian Lillard and a big man, mm -hmm. and still get to keep AD and LeBron. Somehow they get to do it, right? Mm -hmm. Prolific trade. Mm -hmm. They go to the finals. Mm -hmm. It's Lakers versus Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. They go to Game Seven. Everyone's healthy. It's one of those games. LeBron wins while he's winning. While he's just celebrating, you're going greatest of all time when it goes to commercial we're all thinking about next season mm -hmm. Facts. <laughs> what can you do next <laughs> what else is there i'm going to stay warriors though you and you know, know what <laughs> and you know what to, to hip-hop to hip-hop's defense hip-hop started rap started lyricism started when the hype man knew how to hype the DJ and keep the party going. Uh -huh. right. Facts. So, so what else could you do that did that we never felt, but the party kept going, the idea kept going, the 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 life kept going, the the learning we learned about the DJ. He's like, this deep, my DJ, this the fancy fair, my DJ, bro, for the He's like, and we gave tools, we gave gems. It's like, we ain't smoking that crack. You know <laughs> a lot of gems. Definitely. There was a lot of fluff. I, 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 I you know, yeah. mm -hmm. I, I got a color TV so I could see the Knicks play basketball. He probably didn't have a color TV. Exactly. It was exactly. Yeah. So it's just like, it morphed where the hype mm. man morphed into the MC and mm. um, it morphed into the mogul and morphed into, you know, uh, you know, clothing and, mm -hmm. and, all of, and all of the walk of life. Yes. And it started from the Bronx. All right. We're going to get, you know, we could talk about hip hop all day. You are, you know, I see you're a hip hop kind of so like me. Uh, I saw that you all, I mean, you already spoke on it, you know, you spoken word artists performing all over, he was in films like uh, Spit, and he was on Death Poetry Jam. Uh, what was it like performing on Death Poetry Jam? It was great, you know, it was exhilarating. Um, if people don't know about poetry, sometimes when you're on stage, the person that goes before you, if they're, if they're kind of trash. If they're not trash, but if they if their poem is uh and you're a, <laughs> and you're a hot poem, uh -huh. you got a hot piece in you, you know, you know this crowd's gonna rock, you feel good. <laughs> you don't want him to drown or her to drown, yeah. but you feel like, man, I'm a rip the I'm a everybody <laughs> the house yeah. is going roof. And uh, <laughs> in practice, they put this young bull in front of me. And this young, just young kid, you know, 16, they, you know, there was that my season. They were giving uh, the youngins a try, and 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 more. You know, Stan Lathan, his genius was breeding the next um, generation of poets and giving them the confidence and giving them the big stage, uh, which we all love Stan for. He's just Stan Lathan is. Um, there's not. There's the 
there's no words for that man. He is mm. he's one of our pillars. And thank you for deaf poetry and what you gave to us. Um, so in practice, I got Shorty in front of me. Boom. <laughs> we get to the show. I look on the board. I'm number five. Number four, Sonia Sanchez. Uh, <laughs> and then he was like, oh, you mother. I'm putting cases on my and she, came, <laughs> she walked out to the ovation. You understand me? She walked out to the ovation. And she, they stood up. They said, Sonia Stan Sanchez. Nobody clapped. You know how you got to stand yeah, up and yeah. clap. You make sure you got your stand up right before yeah. you give me the ovation. <laughs> That's who came out before me when I went for my poem and um and I read a poem I wrote two days before. Yeah. Right, right off the bat, and um, I brung the crowd right to what my my experience yeah. and what I was going through that day. You know, um, that audacity is why I still hold the mic. Mm -hmm. man, wow, that's crazy. <laughs> All right, let me talk about this. Man. I say, you know, you was most known for your humor as Brooklyn alongside T.I., like I spoke early in the critically acclaimed ATL. How did you get that role and what was it like acting with, you know, some of these great actors up there? Yeah, I, um, I was, uh, was able to go and tell um, Chris Robinson. I had was able to meet him right before, during Deaf Poetry. I actually brought him to my Deaf Poetry taping. So he that story I just explained, uh -huh. Chris Robinson, the director of ATL, was in the was in the seat mm -hmm. watching that, <laughs> watching me sweat. <laughs> and then, and then after that, he says, "Man, you'd be perfect for this movie I got." Can you make it to Atlanta? And I say, yeah, I got you. But they know me as Pun's cousin, so they don't think I can't just go down there. You know, he was actually in New York auditioning for the Brooklyn character and didn't find anyone. The next day, he leaves to Atlanta, but yeah. I ain't have no money. My nephew was just born, and I, I yeah. pieced off my my sister and and what what whatever I had, and I I was just a young poet, right? Yeah. Some CDs and stuff. Um, Are you like sure I can make it? I need somebody. <laughs> yeah, I went on the train, uh -huh. and I did poetry on the train. Uh -huh. You know, um, don't go the local train. Go on the express train because you got more time to get your poem on. And New York paid for that character to exist. Uh -huh. um, when I got there, uh, I, I I I did poetry for two days. Um, and uh, a couple people helped me out, Aunt Marshall from the Lyricist Lounge, and a couple people helped me out with a couple dollars, and we got a ticket, you know, which is expensive back in those days. Like the yeah. next day, this was like six, seven, right? Uh -huh. Still, but still, right? Uh -huh. And so, like, um, we got we got me down there, and a the kid that I had met two weeks prior, his name is Abyss. I met him at Deaf Poetry, or well, a week prior, for well, five days. Well, no, because Deaf Poetry was running for a couple of weeks, okay. right? So, you know, even though my episode was five days before this, uh -huh. it was running for two weeks while we were recording it. And so I met him then, and I slept, I slept on his couch. Uh -huh. and he drove me to the audition. And then um, Kim Harding, who's a legendary casting director, she was like, oh, man, I don't have those sides. Like, <laughs> I don't know what Chris is, because it was her first day, too. You know what I mean? And she was like, I don't know what's going on with Chris. This man, boy. And I'm like, I don't know either. You know? This ain't my gig. I just do um, so then um, she go, all right, I am not going to judge you on the, these sides. Do you know a, like a rap or a poem? He's like, oh, you didn't came in my land. <laughs> I didn't say that. I said, I got like a poem from, yeah, from when in sixth grade, like a poem like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I, I did a piece and um you know the rest is history. And uh the, the family that we became gelling and making that film, you know, I'm still 
Jackie Long is still my brother. You know, he was in the freestyle on my Instagram uh-huh. uh, video just a couple of days ago. Jason Weaver, my brother. You know, Laura London, my my daughter got all the Laura London Pumas. You know, um, whenever she's not yeezied up, <laughs> uh, uh, we got um, you know, it's just it's just a family affair when it came to jelly beans, which mm. you guys know as ATL. Mm. So let me ask you this. Uh, we back. What has been, you know, you've been there so much. What has been your greatest challenge in the industry? My greatest challenge? Mm-hmm. Navigating without pun. Mm. Can you elaborate? I don't, I don't, if pun was a lie, um, I don't think my life is like this. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it is, but I don't think it's like this. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, as far as you talking about in the industry. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. The yeah. challenges you face. Oh, yeah. 2000, he passes away. If, if he doesn't pass away, he didn't even get any ringtone money yet. We uh, didn't yeah. even get like ringtones from, you know, still not a player was ringtoning. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> Reggaeton hadn't even dropped. He had did a hundred percent before reggaeton. Do you know how he went? <laughs> <laughs> we dropped his mic right quick. Do you know? <laughs> no, man. Y'all didn't know how he could sing. Y'all didn't know that. And then and then and then he's have he's part Jamaican, so he has this rhythm to him that was just different. Y'all didn't know any of there's just so much that he died on his second album. Yeah, my life, his little man, with this skill level and this determination. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you would have been, you would have been Drake status by then. <laughs> oh well, well, well. I'm gonna say it's not controversial. Mm-hmm. Let's do it. Let's get it. Mm-hmm. It's not controversial, but it's like mm-hmm. if I was in Clubhouse. Mm-hmm. The accolades and my lyrical ability, even from who I am or what I am and what people know of me and the culture. I could be in a hip hop clubhouse, right? Where somebody will say, Well, yo, this is this is Murphy Lee, Albie. Mute yourself. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? In the sense that. You know, Murphy Lee, dope artist. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You salute know, the Murph, I know Murph. Salute. Salute. <laughs> I don't know what the hook would be. You know what, <laughs> what, I'm what I'm saying is that he was next to a guy. Uh-huh. You feel what I'm saying? Uh-huh. And he got he got he got to he got his Murphy's Law. Uh-huh. You know, and so my thing is me being next to that guy. Uh, you yeah. Know? Uh, yeah. That guy. <laughs> through Jennifer Lopez, yes. Through movies, yes. Are you kidding me? Yes. That's how. Hey, that's how DMX took drag on and put him in Drag on, yeah. like, like, like. On. Oh, let me, let me keep Stunny there. Drag, <laughs> drag on. Shout out to Drag on. He grew up in my projects, uh, uh, Bronxdale. Mm-hmm. Um, that's my brother, lyrical. Like you see what hip what he was able to do with X, uh-huh. yeah, uh-huh. being movies, movies, like, yeah. yeah. That's what that's we we um. Oh my god, <laughs> my my name before I'll be back was Kid Napper. Uh-huh. It was Kid Napper. He was like, "Yo, your name is Kid Napper." Kid it was Napper. It used to be Booby's name, which is his cousin. It used to be Booby's name, and then Booby's the boxer, so he had the Dream Shatterer shorts. So he went. You know, um, Booby went with like the dream, the young dream shadow or whatever, and and then I took his name. I, I it's like <laughs> jacket that was passed down. It's like, nah, it ain't gonna work for you. <laughs> it's, getting, it's getting tight on you, but he was really trying to make he was really he really wanted to be influential in Puerto Rican girls rapping too. Um, you know, right when he signed Remy or he was working with Remy, he also had a Puerto Rican girl by the name of um, Erica, who was uh, Booby's uh, 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 lady and at the time. And and they um, were starting that, you know, idea of just lyrically 
working with women, you know what I'm saying? And just not showing that they, their story is unique enough. If it's told right with the right sounds, you know, we can carry something else into the future. And I, I think, you know, hearing Remy in 2000, you know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. Remy's been rocking for, for 22 right. years, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And so like, like, um, 23 years. Happy, happy, happy new year. Um, so it's like, you know, you know, he, he pun was very, very prolific in, in seeing what what the future would hold. Cause it, how many Cardi B's would there be with that kind of spirit of of pun? There's so much things that you guys don't know about him that, you know, I can't wait to, you know, I like these interviews. I, I do my best to um in, indulge the fans with, with any tidbit that I might have in my brain about him. You know what I'm saying? Okay. He told me how to drive. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? And it was it wasn't like it wasn't um it wasn't like all right, the clutch. It wasn't like it wasn't like, <laughs> it wasn't like that it wasn't that story. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was it was yo, I want to ride the scooter. Yo, let me ride the, <laughs> come on, hey, let me ride the scooter. And he threw the car keys to the bends <laughs> and said, park that across the street. <laughs> He like her. <laughs> what are you gonna do with the car? Hmm? You gonna crash it? Huh? No, 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 no. With a, with, a, with a name like Punisher? I think not. I learned how to drive. That. Like, uh... I don't care how long we took to get across the street. We learned how to drive that day. <laughs> you know what I'm Shout out to Punisher. Rest man. in peace, Big Pun, man. Uh, what do you think has been your greatest accomplishment in the industry? Anytime anyone really closes their eyes and and listen to 24 and attach themselves to the words, I think, you know, it's we're going to be okay. God's not finished. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I could, sure. I could borrow, I could borrow a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're going to be okay. And God's not finished. It's like, you know, there's, there's moments that I worked on, you know, um, even with pun, I've done some things, you know, um, but like, like, you know, while I was there, while he was writing and talking to him and stuff, um, their stuff with Macy Gray, that was fun. I love Macy. Evan Ross, mm-hmm. you know. But if it's to my accomplishment and then the whole number and then, the, you know, this Donda album is special because you can listen to the whole album with your, your daughter, yeah. man, yeah. and still get a feel of rap. Mm-hmm. And get a feel of God. Right. If you put the message of God if you put a gospel, because the gospel album, the gospel is good, the good news, the good news that comes from the Lord that that cha- alters our previous moment into a better space until we get to Him, and um, no matter if you feel it's better or not, you know it is for you for your nourishment. Thanks. Um, when you put those, when you put the, when you put that message out and you get the messenger confused with what the messenger is supposed to do or what you feel the message is. That's, that's a human experience that you're having. I don't think anybody should, should do. Thanks. I, I feel like I could hear, you know, in um the gospel in um, ghost faces dwelling in my past. Oh, like, man. <laughs> whoever thought I have a baby girl and three sons. Uh-huh. But going through this difficult test, but going through this difficult, I find it hard to believe why my old earth has so many seeds because she's her own woman. And due to me, I respect that. I saw a life for what it's really worth and took a step back. Now, if you say that that's not a good news for a man going 35, 36, 37, going through his thing or whatever, uh-huh. or even a young man, 27 with a family and stuff like that, or even younger than that, if you're saying that that's not, and with, with Mary singing on the hook, if you're saying that there's not a gospel moment in that, I, I beg to differ. I, do I just, 
I just want to teach the voice of God or teach how to do your best mm -hmm. to look for it. So that so so when so 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 you learn it. So you learn the voice of God. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so my bars are decoded and impregnated with triple meanings. And but it's all one meaning. You know, it's all have a you know, I'm we're putting out this song called Culture Business um in, in about an hour. Um and we're gonna put it out, I just did the video. Um, I could I could play it now. It could be a world premiere here. Right. Let's um, do it. <laughs> so some of the lines are like, some of the lines are like, why did you say that? It's like, it's like, uh, um, uh, but we have this, uh, we have this understanding of what people think culture is and what people think the business is, and so I'm talking to these poets, and I'm saying, oh, I know how you do that. You know what I'm saying? Here, let me do exactly that. But if you heard it again, you go, oh, there's a <laughs> there's a through line. Yeah, gotcha. Uh, you know what I'm saying? And so this is what we're talking about. Instead of going, this is what, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, y'all don't do this. Uh -huh. Y'all don't do that. It's just simply like, you know what I mean? I can never leave. I'm the best part. Right. <laughs> Yeah, that's a line in the in yeah. the song. But if you said it to yourself, <laughs> why would Jesus die for you if he wasn't? Right, the real talk. That is true. And so, like, you know, how can people hear things, see things, and then have a question? That means oh. you're looking. And if you're looking, I pray that God continues to give me the answers to give you. Yeah. You know? Right now it's Apple Z. Yeah. Uh, let me ask you this, Abby. Um, do you have anything coming up for the people that they can check out and where can they find you at also? Yeah, yeah. We just dropped the freestyle that did really well. Oh, the, off the mask off. You know, I just kind of went brazy on that. Um, because <laughs> of, uh it was just fun, you know, just having fun again on, on back on the mic. Um the lines in that joint. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, well, I said I was made for it. Born gripping the lifesaver of all businesses. He caught it the mic player. Uh, if you don't pay the fiasco, recite lasers. I'm the right native. The, win, the one wherever you are, neighbor. The world trade lived and died from world traders. 20 yeah. stories in my building, A through M shit. And oh, P to Z shit. A bunch of alphas betting on their ego thesis. An hour and 20 minutes for the emergencies on these polices. Don't tell me not to grow up thinking we don't need it. Mm -hmm. And how my ones is the O in defense. Mm -hmm. how the code, <laughs> and how the code made us contra conscious. Uh, 30, 30 piece I'm beasting. Uh, All you need is Jesus. Uh, Jesus had a dozen. Oh, you gonna Lisa Lisa Liam Neeson on this path. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, like, it's man, like I love it. <laughs> no, no, no. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. like the fact that the contra up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right is how somebody would have attacked the contra line or theme or bar. And I'm like, nah, I know that that code gives you 30 men. Mm -hmm. So they put a video game in front of us black boys and said, in order to beat this game, you're gonna need, you're gonna need a code. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes. In order to beat this game, you're gonna need a code to be better. You're gonna need 30 men. And so in our conscious, we like, oh, we always need 30 men. Mm -hmm. But to cheat, the cheat yes, code, facts, facts. It's like all you need is Jesus. But facts. Jesus had a dozen. You're going to lease at least a Liam Neeson packing ovens on this path. For <laughs> My opinion yeah. is a math discussion. Yeah, I ain't yeah, do a bad. lot, but somehow it's still a mass consumption. I'm talking rapper lump shit, and he don't have a lung shit. I held it all since pun split, but please believe the Latin in me can breathe a trumpet and uh, and drum a puente. I've been uh -huh. on one team the whole time. I'm more uh -huh. Pele. Mark blue mm. cannons, and I'm too young to understand it. Standing there, cause I'm the only cousin that spoke some Spanish. Uh. 
You know, and like, 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 like Carlos, Carlos, Carlos. Yo. <laughs> yo, we high here, man. <laughs> Happy birthday. I'm 40. Playing hey, with man, you. Salute, man. Hey, That's man. That's fun, baby. So, Abby, I got one more question for you, man. I like to ask my guests. Yo. When it is all said and done and you are long gone from this earth, what is it you want the people to know about I'll be back? Um, yeah, he was a tree. You know, just just doing the work of the father, st- stretching uh, his arms to heaven, dropping off fruit, providing shade. Uh, providing air, uh, providing a place to carve your name for a memory, mm-hmm. providing a dope picture and a dope view, um, providing paper, providing some dope raps on that paper. Yeah. Um, and this little, uh, this little one of the little apples that I, I dropped everything that she does um, and how she protects her siblings, you know, um, in the future and in the forest that I provided. Absolutely. So, and, man, I go ahead. Bro. Praise God. Praise and God. I, I love how you throw God in there. I put God in everything I do, so I love how you do that. You know, like, man, it's the truth. Yeah, so, well, you know, I mean, it comes to the trees, you know, just think about a tree being there for 200 years and then think about us not us living a blip of that. You know what praise I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, praise God. Everything in the, in this middle is, you know, just, you know, try to be a tree. But let the people know where they can find you at. Uh, call us up. 1-800-223-97. No, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can find me. Um, at uh Johnny Anthian, uh I'll be back, Instagram, um A L B E B A C K. Um and that's on everything, YouTube, across the board, Facebook, whatever. And um but yeah, man, you know, like uh we got some stuff coming up. So we got movies, cartoons, grandioso stuff, like really like whoo. <laughs> that must have taken a long time. Yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, video games uh, is a conglomerate of uh, multimedia that I've been bred for. But now I'm in a space where I'm able to direct it all. So we're gonna, you know, uh, we're gonna see, you know, how that works. All right. Well, thank you, Abby. Back, man. I want to chop it up with you, boy. Look, whatever you need to promote some, I want yeah, you, you to come- watch the video. You want to do the video? I, I, got another, I got another. I got another. I got another appointment. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Well, come, well, come see it right now at the at, at the Instagram. We're about to post it right now. It's a world premiere. All right. And I, I definitely want to uh I do another podcast where we talk talk hip hop. I would love to get you on there and you know get your knowledge too. Yeah. Let's do it. Okay. So I will uh, hit you up, man. I love the conversation we had. I would definitely let you know when I drop this article. It'll be very soon, probably within the next few days too. All right, G. Praise God. All right, praise God. I'll talk to you later.